On today's show, we're gonna discuss whether it's better to shoot 4K or 1080p if you're a vlogger. Good morning, actually good afternoon, and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live now two times a week show here at youtube.com slash photojoseph every Monday 1.30 p.m., Thursday at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time that is talking about all kinds of good things, photography, video related, and I'm realizing now I'm going to have to tighten up that intro now that it's like all these different times, it's more confusing, but new time, same show. Excellent. Good to see you all here today. Hey, if you're watching live, if you have any questions during the live show, make sure you put them into the live chat room and make sure you put at photo Joseph in front of it. That way it pops up on my screen. I can see your beautiful name in there and I know that you are in fact posting a question in there. And of course, if you're not watching live, just drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to get to it at a later time. So today's topic, vlogging. Should you be shooting 4K or 1080p? Hmm. Interesting, isn't it? So here's, here's the argument for 4K. And I, if I'm doing any I'm knocking things over. If I'm doing any professional work, if I'm shooting for a client, I'm always going to shoot 4K. Even if the delivery is 1080p, I'm always going to shoot 4K. The advantage of shooting 4K, as many of you know, if you're delivering in 1080p, is the ability to punch into the shot, right? To reframe. If I've got a scene that looks like this and I want to do a punch in to this, I can do that if I'm shooting 4K and delivering 1080p. I can do a full 200% scale on the timeline and not actually be interpolating anything, not adding anything up. We are simply moving into the pixels that are there. We are not pixel doubling. We're not scaling anything at all, which is a huge advantage. But even if you look at, let's say, my GH5 training course that I did, that was shot entirely in 4K, but it's delivered in HD. It's delivered in 1080p. And the main shot, the main, like basically this shot was probably a about this wide for the main shot, but every time there's a punch in close up to my face or just a slight punch in, that was just punching into the frame. It wasn't a second camera. There were second cameras for top downs and close ups and things like that, but the main view allowed me to do that. And one of the huge advantages, other than just creative editing, is you can edit around things, right? If I'm talking and I go, um, 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 the thing, and I want to cut out all the um, um, ums, I can cut that out, but if it's just a straight cut, suddenly I'm here going, and then the thing, right? and it just doesn't it doesn't look quite right. But if you punch in, it's almost like a camera angle change, and you can get away with it a lot. You can get away with a lot that way. So that's that's one of the big advantages of shooting 4K. It's also for if you're doing stabilization. Uh, there's a great you, you stabilize much better if you got 4K. You got more room to work with. There's a lot of reasons to shoot 4K. But I found for me personally, when I'm vlogging, which I don't do that much, but when I'm vlogging, I know I'm going to deliver 1080p because I'm gonna shoot a lot of slow motion because I kind of like the slow motion. It's kind of awesome, right? And if you're shooting 4K, the slowest slow motion you can get on the GH5 or the G9 or the GH5S is going to be 60p, which is only 50% slow down. If you're delivering in 30p, it's only a 50% slow down. So it's, you know, it's, it's slower, but it's not like mm, that really good slow motion. For the really good slow motion, you gotta drop to 1080p. And this is not unique to the Lumix cameras. Um, I'm not sure that there's too many commercial cameras, uh, consumer level cameras, you know, not like super, super high end red type cameras that can shoot 4K at anything over 60p. Um, if there are, please tell me in the chat room. I'm sure there's something out there, but I'm sure it costs a lot of money. So we're talking things that you and I can afford. And so if you want to get that really sweet slow motion, you got to go 1080. And if you're shooting 1080, then 1080p, then on like the G9, you get 180 frame per second. The GH5 gets 180 frame per second. The GH5S, does 240 frame per second slow motion at 1080p. <laughs> That's really sexy, right? That's really cool. But now I've got this beautiful slow motion footage at 1080p. Well, if I'm going to shoot 4K, then that means I'm taking everything down to 1080p, which is fine because then I have, like I said, the advantage of the ability to punch into the shot a little bit. But what I found is I never do that. I almost never reframe a vlog shot. Professional work, yes. Vlogging, I just never did it. At the most, maybe I wanted to straighten a shot a little bit. It was a little bit jaunty, and so you need to zoom in a little bit. But you know, you can take a 1080p shot on a 1080p timeline and scale it up to like 110%, and no one's gonna notice. Especially if it's a you know it's part of a faster cut, you just drop it in there for a couple seconds. No one's gonna see that. No one's gonna go, hey, you scaled that shot up. No one's gonna notice. But if you're doing that just so that you have a little bit of wiggle room, so you can straighten it a little bit, or maybe cut some weird thing off the side, it's totally acceptable. So. With all that in mind, getting ready for my trip to India, I thought, I'm just going to shoot 1080p. It's going to be lighter weight, meaning I have smaller files, easier to process. I did all of the storage and editing on my iPad Pro, which meant that, I guess I don't need that, um, which means that I can actually do 
everything even faster on here. The, the remarkable thing is you can actually edit 4K 60p on here, which is insane. You totally can do it. But if you're rendering 1080, um, and I was doing 1080 60, so 1080p 60, rendered down to 1080 30, uh, it handles it just like, even faster, right? So it's just really smooth, really buttery. Um, you know, it's nice. It's just nice to have that really extra speed boost in there, and why not, right? And if I'm never going to scale in, there's not much point. So you go, okay, well, that, that's a pretty logical conclusion. But it turns out there's one more really, really cool advantage. Before I tell you what that is, though, because I'm just going to be this kind of way about it, I am going to bring up this screen to remind you, since I'm talking about India, about my trip to India coming up here. So January 30th, February 9th, we're going to be in India. It's a photography workshop slash tour, photojoseph.com slash India for all the infos. I am slowly, but I will get more videos out to you so you can see what I saw when I was just there because it was awesome. And frankly, I think for a lot of you, you're going to look at that footage and go, oh, yeah, I, I, I want to go. So. Go to that site, check it out, learn all about it, and hopefully join me. Okay, so one of the other big advantages of shooting 1080p that I didn't even think about until I was actually on the ground shooting out there was the extended teleconverter mode. What's that? So when you're shooting 4K on a GH5, a GH5S, a G9, you are using the entire sensor, and it's scaling it down to 4K, because the entire sensor is a little bit bigger than 4K. It scales it down to 4K. If you're shooting 1080p, it uses the entire sensor and scales it down to 1080p. But you don't need the entire sensor. You can actually punch into the middle of the sensor and not do any scaling. You're not doing any digital scaling, but you can actually use, out of the 5,000 or whatever pixels wide that is native on the sensor, you can use just 1,920 pixels wide and 1,080 pixels tall of that. So if this is your sensor, you can use just this much of it. And what that means is you've effectively just gotten yourself a zoom, a digital zoom, but that is not your traditional digital zoom where it's actually scaling it up. Digital zoom's horrible, right? You don't want to do that. But if you're punching into the sensor, you're not scaling it, you're still getting pixel for pixel quality, you now have a second lens effectively built into your camera. So your wide lens becomes a wide and a basically a little bit more than normal lens. A longer lens becomes a long and a quite a large telephoto lens. So let me show you how to set it up in here. And then um, I'm going to show you the numbers so you can see what the differences are. But if you go into, let's see, are we on here? Um, there we go. Hmm. There it is. Okay. If you go into your camera settings somewhere in here, and I'm going to totally forget where it was because I was looking this up earlier, you're going to find something called extended EX teleconverter. There it is. So this is the camera menu. It's page three of four. We're on the G9 right now. It's going to be roughly the same place in the other cameras. And you see it's an off and on function. That's it. Now, when you turn it on, it's punching into that full center crop of the sensor. And what that gives you, the math on that is, and this is according to the manual, it's a 2.7x magnification. So 2.7x, so it's quite a bit. And again, we'll, we'll look at the numbers in a second here. So that's how you turn it on. But digging into the menu to do that would kind of suck, right? You don't want to have to dig into the menu to do it. So what you do instead, let's go for an overhead shot here, is, ooh, nice, is you set up one of the function buttons. So I used the down on the, on the wheel here. If you press and hold on that for a moment, it's going to pop up this menu to allow you to reprogram the function buttons. So now let's go back over to this view. And you can see what it is already set to. That down on the jog wheel is set to extended teleconversion. And so now what happens when I'm shooting, let's just go this view here, I'm shooting and I push the down button and it pops up the extended teleconversion. Let's put that where you can nicely see it. There you go. And I just rock over to on and now it's just zoomed in. So there's my two shots. So there's a 12 millimeter lens. Let's go nice and wide. It's actually a little bit overexposed. Let's bring the, uh, there we go. So there's my 12 millimeter shot. And then there is my punched in shot. So just like that. And you're not losing any quality on there. That is huge. That meant for me that I was able to shoot with a 12 millimeter lens for the vast majority of the stuff that I did. And when I wanted longer, I switched to the Noctocron. So I went from the 12 all the way to the 42 and a half to the Noctocron, giving me um, what would normally be a kind of a too big of a jump with nothing in the middle, but the extended tele teleconverter mode gives me that something in the middle. So here, let's take a look at the, uh, at the numbers on here. Uh, this is what you get. So 12 millimeter standard, so that's a 24 mil full frame equivalent. With the extended teleconverter on 2.7x, it becomes a 32.4, 32.5 millimeter full frame equivalent of, let's just call it 65. So you've got a 24 and a 65 millimeter lens in one lens. And then when you jump onto the Noctocron, which is what I had here, that's an 85 mil equivalent, and then a 230 mil equivalent with the extended teleconverter. So my focal lengths were from 24, 65, 
85, and then 230. And I did have the 25 mil with me as well. I didn't ended up not using it that much, but if I needed it, then there was 50 to 135. So there's more ranges that I had in there. But I did almost all of my shooting with the 12 millimeter and the Noctocron, the 42 and a half. Nice, good, fast autofocus for working, for doing vlogging kind of stuff. Um, the 12 millimeter worked out as a great vlogging lens, just pointing it back at me. And in fact, here, let's just do that. I'll show you what the focal length looks like. It's actually very, very good. Uh, let's see here. Do I, must, oh, I have the teleconverter turned on. That, that makes it a little bit too close. <laughs> Definitely a little bit too close. But let's go to this view. And there we go. So there's my view with the no card inserted. There we go. So there's the view for vlogging kind of a thing. And it just it worked out really, really, really well. And you'll eventually see some of this footage as I, uh, as I get my clips uploaded. So that's it. That's I think it's a huge advantage. So I think shooting 1080p for vlogging is a great way to go. You don't need the 4K. If you're not going to reframe all the time, then you're just wasting time and space. You store a lot more on a single card when you're shooting with the 1080p. You're taking a lot less storage space on your iPad or wherever you're offloading stuff to. Your editing is going to be faster and lighter weight. Your upload time, since you're going to 1080 anyway, it's probably it's not going to be any different. But why waste it if you're not going to do it? And it matches your slow motion speed, so, uh, slow motion footage, so you don't have to scale that up. Or of course, you have all this extra wasted footage. And then you add in the extended teleconverter, and you get two lenses in one with every lens you put on there. And I'm sold. So that worked out really, really well for me. I thought it was a great solution. And hopefully, that is helpful for some of you that are going to head out and start shooting with these things, doing some vlogging, traveling, and all that good stuff. All right, let's jump over to the Q&A. As you know, if you are watching this live, if you've got a question, make sure you put at photo just in front of it, get into the live chat room, and we will address it right now.